What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode with Broke Girls Art School. In today's episode, I will be showing you guys some watercolor painting techniques uh, for this portrait of Lucifer that I recently just completed. I'll show you some up close details. I did use liquid acrylics for this, but I used the same watercolor techniques that I use otherwise. Um, but yeah, I actually did this as a trade with a friend of mine that does readings for me. She's a witch, a medium, a writer, all those good things. <laughs> so if you ever want to get a reading done and get in touch with your guides, I would highly recommend checking her out. Um, her TikTok account is The Minimalist Witch. But yeah, if you guys have any questions at all about the techniques that I'm using, feel free to drop a comment. I'll make sure to get back to you. And don't forget to like this video if it helped you out and hit that subscribe button if you wanna see some future content from me. Let's get started, you guys. So first I wanted to show you guys how I got my sketch on the iPad. I usually sketch things out first on here to make sure I have everything how I want it before I put it on paper. Um, she said that Chris Evans is the closest resemblance to Lucifer when she sees him. So I definitely wanted to use him as reference. Um, and to give the piece some more composition, I threw some wings, some wings in there and some floating candles. I wanted to play with having some in front and behind him. All right guys, so the first thing I'm gonna be doing is taking my Pigma markers and outlining what I wanna outline. Um, I'm gonna treat this painting similarly to how I treat a tattoo. I'm gonna outline it first and then paint after. I really like these though, because they have a felt tip. There's three different sizes small, medium, and large. And um, I just like the felt tip a lot more personally. But yeah, let's get started. All right, so I usually like to use a thicker outline for like the very outside edge of things. So here I'm using the medium sized uh, marker. And these pigments are really nice because they're watercolor, so you don't have to worry about it smearing around. And I like being able to line things out first as well and I usually try to go over with my eraser as you can see here like I'll lighten up that graphite a little bit before I go over it with the marker I feel like it just makes the ink go onto the page a little bit easier too so as you can see this is my fine tip pigma marker so this is a bit thinner than the outer edges Yeah, I think having those bolder lines just really adds more to show some more depth and make some things come across as more bold than others. And what's nice about these really fine tip markers is you can kind of put in as much or as little detail as you want, which is nice because when you're working on a tattoo, you want to keep things more simple because over time those really fine lines are going to end up expanding and blurring a little bit. So it's nice on paper. You really can't do as much or as little detail as you want. So here we're going in and starting to map out the face. Um, I'm going in pretty light here and I will build and sculpt those lines as I go. Um, I always tread a little bit more lightly when working on the face. <laughs> it's the most important part, right? So we're doing very fine lines over those eyes and around the edges of the nose. Again, if you were going for more of like a realistic style, you probably wouldn't be lining things like this, but I'm doing this in similar application to how I would a tattoo. You're using very fine lines in the beard there. And I'll go back in later and throw in some thicker ones to give it some more um, variety, but to start, I'm just getting those little details in. And I do the same thing with wood burning too when it comes to sculpting lines. Um, I, I like to go in lighter and then make them more bold as I go. So once that pen hits the paper, there's no going back. <laughs> As you can see, I have that thicker line around the whole edge of the hair, and then I have that tapering off into thinner lines. 
for the detail on the hair. I think it would look a lot more blocky if the lines were all the same, all the same width. Which I mean, if you want to stylize things that way, then by all means go ahead, but I like more fine lines. So here is where we are at progress wise after getting all the bold lines in there. I kind of love how that looks with just the lines on the paper because there's so much contrast, but excited to start painting. All right, so as you can see, every time I am adding more pigment, I go over the paper first with just water. So here is just water with no pigment at all. And that makes the paint spread a lot easier. So you can see it kind of fades out and then I'm just kind of moving that pigment down the page and then wiping off my brush periodically and dipping in water to lighten the tone. And I wanted the wings to have a little bit of a tattered texture to them. So I definitely layer over those a few times. This is just the base of getting that fade from black or almost black down into a lighter gray wash. So you, you can see here I'm not really smoothing it out as much because I wanted it to have that tattered look. Don't mind all the dog hair on my sleeve there. <laughs> but here is some real time so you guys can see. So I'm going around the edge of that, um, the candle pretty carefully because I want that glow to be pure white so it stands out a lot in the foreground. So here I'm just using water. There's a little bit of pigment still on the brush but that's not a big deal since we're going over it with pretty much black anyway. So now that I have that little chunk wet, Going in with my pigment pigment here. Like I said, just starting at the top and dragging it down. I like using round brushes personally, and I think I just had like two, maybe three sizes with the round brushes. For like really big areas, I'll get the bigger one out because it's smoother, but otherwise the small brushes don't really take that much time anyway. You can see I wipe my brush a ton throughout this process. So now we're just darkening that a little bit more. And keep in mind, you guys, when you originally put stuff on the paper, it's gonna go on and look a lot darker before it dries. Like as you can see comparatively, that chunk that I just did compared to the parts that have already dried that I went in first, it's uh, quite a bit, quite a bit darker. So now I'm going in for this bottom chunk. Same thing, I didn't add any pigment to the brush, just dipped it in water. And I am going around the edges of my other subject matter. And I do think that it helps keep watercolor neater if you're going for a really smooth finish um, to lay the water down first because it just makes it a lot easier to spread, to spread the pigment. So now I didn't go in with um, as dark of, of a black as I did up top there. This is probably like a mid wash. And I'll make another video explaining to you guys how I make my washes. It's pretty similar in tattooing as well. Basically your most solid black is just the ink and then you add a little bit more and more water until it's as diluted as you want. <laughs> so I had probably five different um, five different tones here. So 
So the one all the way to my right is, I think I just did like two drops of black and the rest water. So that's my most diluted. And then if you go one to the left of that, that's like three or four drops of black and so on. Now I'm just throwing it back in the time lapse because that would have taken forever if I left it in real time. <laughs> Yeah, so at the bottom here, I was using my two and three drip to get that nice soft tone at the bottom. Now adding some texture to make it look like the other panels on the wing. All right, so now I'm going in and throwing some shadows on those bones that are on the inside of the wing. I didn't want them to pop out too much, so throwing a wash over there so it blends in a little bit more. Yeah, like I said, I don't want there to be too much contrast in the wing because then I think that'll take away from the contrast from the light of the candle right in front of it. So now we're starting the flame. Here I'm just going in with my two drip, keeping the, keeping the flame very light. And then I'm just gonna leave that outer circle, I'm just gonna leave that the color of the paper. And I wanted this here to contrast with the wing really hard too, the candle itself. So I definitely wanted a lot of solid black in there. And then I just kind of lighten it up a little bit at the end so that way on the inside of the candle I can do solid black inside of there as well. And you can lighten watercolor up a little bit. Like as you can see here, I kind of like brush upwards. I'm moving the pigment up to lighten that bottom rim so this black I'm doing here will pop out more. Now we are getting started on the hair. So same thing, I'm just kind of taking the hair in chunks and went over that with all water first and then putting in my pigment, starting with more of a mid-tone and then I'll be going in and adding some darker blacks later on. But, and another tip you guys, if I'm gonna be doing like stuff in chunks like this, I won't do like wet stuff right next to each other. So as you can see, I left that little gap in between the parts of hair that I was painting so they could each dry a little bit before I was going in between there. So I'll kind of hop around a little bit to give stuff a chance to dry so when I do the black at the top of this section here, it's not gonna push into the light tones that I have right above it. So this kind of gives like a layered effect with the hair and a little bit more depth rather than if it was just all solid black. As you can see, I'm dragging out some darker tones from the top of the root. She had, she said that he has like a, uh, a lighter brown hair color, so I didn't want to go too dark with it, even though I was working with, you know, just black and gray. And right around the hairline, I threw in a few little like loose strands. can see starting at the root, brushing out that black. I'm gonna continue that with all of the different chunks in the hair. Like I said, guys, I am constantly dabbing water off of my brush so I can adjust and get a 
proper proper wetness level. <laughs> But yeah, if you apply too much water to the paper, then your pigment will branch out too much and it can cause like excess warping, which you wanna to try to avoid because the more water that's on the page, the more it's gonna start to crinkle. All right, so now we have that hair done. Moving on to the face here. So I wanted to tackle the forehead kind of all at once. Um, like I said, guys, I like to layer stuff. So I'm going in with my lightest tones first and then slowly, slowly and carefully on the face, um, adding some darker pigment. You can always add more, but it's a lot harder to take away. So here too, I went over the whole cheek with water and then I'm just brushing in my lighter pigment to kind of get a map down of where the shadowing is gonna be. And my brush is not very wet at all for this. So like I said, I do not want that paper to warp. So I feel like the harsher shadow, shadow points on faces are typically on like one or the other side of the nose and then under the cheekbones. And uh, cause you wanna show that like the face is curved. So I feel like the outer edges of the face are always a little bit darker and needs a little bit of extra shadowing to show that dimension. Same with like the cheekbone here, you can see I'm kind of outlining that with a little bit of a darker hue. Here we're thickening around like the eyelashes, filling in them brows. Those brows look better than mine. <laughs> and another thing that I feel like I see people do often is like leaving the whites of the eye like the same tone as the white of the page. And I always recommend putting a little bit of like shadowing in the eye because again, it's not like a piercing white surface. Your eye is round, you gotta show a little bit of shadow especially right underneath the lid of the eye as well. You can see I'll do a little bit of a shadow coming down from the top lid. Gives it more of a realistic feel. And slowly adding in those shadows. As you can see with the face, guys, I usually work my way from top down. So that's why I'm like, I'm gonna get the hair out of the way first. And cause you don't wanna be putting your hand in like on the wet paper and potentially smudging whatever you just put down. So I always recommend starting at the top left part of the page, or I guess it would be the top right part if you're left-handed, but you get the idea. <laughs> And again, I'm wearing my gloves so the oils in my hand don't seep into the paper. So here's that darker, darker shadowing on the other side of the nose and showing the roundness of the eyelid there. So I'm using kind of the same technique with the beard as I did with his other hair. So I'm wetting the whole area and then going around the edges with one of my darker pigments and then kind of brushing that into a lighter tone in the middle. I decreased the contrast a little bit in the beard because I didn't want it to look like as chunky as the hair because it's not as long of hair so you don't need as much of a contrast difference. So there we're just going over with water first. 
Now bringing some darkness around the edges, again to show some more depth. As you can see guys, my brush strokes are always going in the direction that the hair would be going. All of that stuff plays into the finished product in the end. So you wanna be conscious of your brush strokes. And that's the same for a lot of mediums of art, whether that be wood burning, tattooing, that carries across everything. Same with the direction of like shadows and stuff as well. See, I'm just layering, layering and layering to get that hair effect. But I really like the effect that I got, that I ended up getting with the beard. And we are just adding some more details on top of that base layer. And I also think it's important to add textures in the hair like this because it makes the shading in the face look that much smoother if you have it next to a textured area. All right, so now we are gonna start the shading on the body. Um, same thing, going in with water first, and then I'm kind of starting with like a mid-tone, like I think my, I was using my three drip for most of this, and then just kind of shaping and sculpting as I went. Um, I did end up using a little bit too much water at a time and ended up crinkling the, cra the paper. Not a crazy, it's not crazy warped, but definitely a little bit more than I wanted it to while I was working on it, but that's okay. Still looks good. So the darkest points on the body are gonna be like right at the nape of the neck, like underneath the ear and like that line coming off of his neck onto his tricep. I'm gonna be, and same with like in the armpits and the, the spots that like go in, like the center of the chest or like the crease in the arm, you want, definitely wanna throw in some darker shadows there to show the curvature of the body and muscle structure as well. You can see I left like the collarbones a little bit lighter. And then here, again, that black candle is contrasting really well with the body. And going in really light with the flame on this as well. All right, so here is where we are progress-wise with this mostly dried up. I'm really liking the tones and gradients that we have going so far, and we're gonna continue the same thing onto the other wing now. I wanted to show you guys a little close-up action again on the candle. So you can see I did all the candles the exact same way. I have that black fading into a nice mid-tone gray. And then to show the inside of the candle, I'm doing solid black right behind that. Again, fading out to the bottom drips into a nice mid-tone. And I'm planning on doing the background just solid black. So I definitely wanted the bottom of those drips to not <laughs> also be black. So you could see the outer rim.
And here we're doing the other wing, pretty similar to how we did the first. So since that wing is coming up from behind the body, that's why I'm starting with like black coming out to really accentuate that shadow going up into a lighter tone. And then same thing here, going through with the water and then brushing that black all the way out. And then I just did the same thing on the rest of the wing, so I figured I'd fast forward to save you guys watching it over again. <laughs> but now I wanted to accentuate that shadow um, to push the wings back further since they are behind him. So I wanted to have some, some black coming out from behind the body. And again, I was going for more of like a tattered look with these wings, so... Can see my brush strokes aren't very clean. Um, I have my brush relatively pretty dry here. So I wanted the strokes to be like broken up a little bit. And don't be afraid to use a lot of solid black, you guys. I mean, obviously too much black and your piece is gonna look muted, but if you use black properly, it has a really nice effect. And I wanted it to have the effect like the candles were glowing on the wing, so that's why I left like some lighter tones in the center part of the wing. All right, so now we're on the finishing touches. Uh, throw in some shadowing in the bones in the other wing. Uh, one part I forgot to record, I did go in with my fine tip marker at the end and throw in some like veins into the wings as well. Uh, but I think I forgot to record that part, yeah. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna be going in and starting the background. Like I said, I'm just going in solid black with this. And since I have like those top horns on the wings and those outer edges of the wings, a uh, lighter gray wash, they still stand out a lot from the background, even though there's a ton of solid black in the wing. So it's just important to have those readable edges around your subject matter so things don't get too muted. Like the bottom of that candle there as well. If I would have brought that black all the way down, then you wouldn't be able to see the full outline of it in contrast with the background. And I did a, a few coats over some spots to make sure that that background was nice and solid. Again, you don't wanna to use too much water though because then it will warp your paper. So now I'm going in, because the one part color that we wanted to do was representing his eyes because one of his eyes is blue and the other is brown. So I did um, a dark brown and a light brown tone and then a dark blue and a light blue tone to kind of make the eyes look like they were glowing a little bit. I did some, a little bit of gold in there as well to give them some sparkle. doing some finishing touches. So here we have the finished product. I wanna just show you guys some close-ups with some natural lighting. But I really love how this turned out and I'm really excited that she's super stoked on it too. I couldn't wait to show her. <laughs> 
But yeah, like I said, guys, drop a comment if you have any questions at all, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see some future videos from me. Thank you.